This lesson is on independent and dependent quantities. In a situation when one quantity or number depends on another, it is called the dependent quantity. The quantity that it depends on is called the independent quantity. In this situation, let's determine which one is the independent quantity and which is the dependent quantity. The amount of water in a bathtub and the water pressure. So we want need to decide if the amount of water in a bathtub depends on the water pressure or if the water pressure depends on the amount of water in a bathtub. In this case, the water pressure is going to be the independent quantity and the amount of water in a bathtub is going to be the dependent quantity because the amount of water in a bathtub will depend on how much water is coming out, aka the water pressure. How many bibs Archer uses and how much he drools throughout the day. So what I always like to do is like to say, is it the amount of bibs that Archer uses depends on how much he drools throughout the day or how much he drools throughout the day depends on how many bibs he uses. The first thing I said makes more sense that the amount of bibs that he uses will depend on how much he drools throughout the day. So in this case, the uh, how many bibs Archer uses is the dependent quantity because that depends on how much he drools throughout the day. That is the independent quantity. The dependent quantity is changing depending on how the independent quantity changes. So if he drools more, he'll use more bibs. How many TikToks you post and how many views you get. So in this case, uh, again, we're going to say, is it how many TikToks you post depends on how many views you get? Or is it how many views you get depends on how many TikToks you post? So in that case, the second one seemed to make more sense. So how many views you get will depend on how many TikToks you post. So that means how many views you get is the dependent quantity and how many TikToks you post will be the independent quantity. One way you can think about this is that you need to know the independent quantity um, or you need to do the independent quantity before you get the dependent quantity. So you have to post a TikTok before you get the views. In the previous example, Archer has to drool before he uses the bibs. So the dependent quantity comes after the independent quantity. So for each of these examples, we're going to underline the dependent quantity and circle the independent quantity. So the first one is the number of movie tickets purchased and the total costs. So the Movie tickets purchased depends on the total cost, or is it the total cost depends on the number of movie tickets purchased? So that second one made more sense, which means that the total cost is going to be the dependent quantity. And the number of movie tickets purchased is going to be the independent quantity. Because again, you're purchasing the tickets before you get the total cost. Second one, the number of eggs used and the number of cakes baked. The number of eggs used depends on the number of cakes baked or the number of cakes baked depend on the number of eggs used. The number of eggs used depends on the number of cakes baked for this one. Because depending on how many cakes you're going to bake, that's how many eggs that you use. The third example, number of students in attendance at school and the number of lunches served. So in this case, it makes more sense to say the number of lunches served will depend on the number of students in attendance, which means the number of lunches served is the dependent quantity and the number of students in attendance is the independent quantity. Fourth example, the number of hours driven and the number of miles to a vacation destination. So for this one, it makes more sense to say the number of hours driven depends on the number of miles to a vacation destination. So in that case, that means that the uh, number of hours driven is going to depend on the number of miles to a vacation destination. In the last example, we have the number of minutes a swimming pool is filled with water and the number of gallons of water in the swimming pool. In this case, we're going to say that the uh, number of gallons of water in the swimming pool will depend on um, how many minutes
it's filled with water. Okay, for each of these, we're going to determine the independent and dependent quantities, and we're gonna include the appropriate units of measure for each quantity. So the first one, it's called Daredevil. It says Grayson completes a dive from a cliff 75 feet above a river. It takes him only 1.5 seconds to hit the water and then another 0.5 seconds to descend 10 feet into the river. So in this case, the two quantities that we're dealing with um, is the distance to the water, which is measured in feet. And the second quantity we're dealing with is time, which in this problem is measured in seconds. So for this one, distance to the water will depend on the amount of time it, uh, that has elapsed. So in this case, distance to the water is going to be um, the dependent quantity, and the independent quantity is going to be time in seconds. So again, distance to the water is going to be our dependent quantity, and the time is going to be our independent quantity. The amazing Aloysius is practicing one of his tricks. As part of this trick, he cuts a rope into many pieces and then magically puts the pieces of rope back together. He begins a trick with a 20-foot rope and then cuts it in half. He then takes one of the halves and cuts that piece in half. He repeats this process until he is left with a piece so small he could no longer cut it. The two quantities we're dealing with is the length of the rope, which is measured in feet. And the second quantity is the number of cuts, which the units in this case would be cuts. So in this case, uh, the length of the rope is going to depend on the number of cuts, which means the length of the rope is going to be the dependent quantity, and the number of cuts is going to be the independent quantity. This example says Candace is building a building manager for the Crowley Enterprise office building. One of her responsibilities is cleaning the office building's 200 gallon aquarium. For cleaning, she must remove the fish from the aquarium and drain the water. The water drains at a constant rate of 10 gallons per minute. So the two quantities we're dealing with in this situation is the uh, time, which is measured in minutes. And the second quantity is the uh, water, which is measured in gallons. So for here, we're going to say the water, the amount of water depends on the amount of time, which means the amount of water is going to be our dependent quantity. Uh, and then, then time is gonna be our independent quantity. You have your eye on an upgraded smartphone. However, you currently do not have the money to purchase it. Your cousin will provide the funding as long as you pay him back with interest. He tells you that you only need to pay $1 in interest initially, and then the interest will double each week after that. You consider his offer and wonder if this is really a good deal. So the two quantities for this one, um, again, we're dealing with time. But in this problem, it's measured in weeks. And the second quantity is uh, money, which is measured in dollars. With most problems involving time, time will generally be the independent quantity. So for this problem, uh, that rule follows. It says the amount of money that you owe will depend on the time, which means that the money is going to be the dependent quantity and the time is going to be the independent quantity. Andrew loves skiing. He just hates the ski lift. To make matters worse, the ski lift has been acting up today. Andrew is using the GPS on his phone to track the ski lift's progress as it travels up the mountain. It moves at a steady rate of 400 feet per minute until it stops suddenly. Andrew calls his friends to tell them that he is stuck. They talk on the phone for 10 minutes until the ski lift begins moving again. So the two quantities we're dealing with, um, again, we have time. In this problem, it's measured in minutes. And then we have distance, which is measured in feet. So just like the previous problem, 
Time is going to be your independent quantity um, because the distance that you travel is going to depend on the time. So that means distance would be the dependent quantity and time would be the independent quantity. Jill is a drum major for, for the Altadena High School Marching Band. For the finale of the halftime performance, Jill tosses her baton in the air so it reaches a maximum height of 22 feet. This gives her two seconds to twirl around twice and catch the baton when it comes down. So again, with this problem, we're dealing with time, which is measured in seconds for this problem. And then uh, height, which is measured in feet. So as with the previous problems involving time, uh, the height of the baton is going to depend on the time, which means that our height is going to be our dependent quantity, which means time is going to be our independent quantity. The number of guests at a ski resort on any given day is related to the day's high temperature. The high temperature is negative uh, 20 degrees or or below, no one comes to the resort. As the temperature increases, so does the number of guests. Once the temperature reaches zero degrees Fahrenheit and increases through the single digits, the number of guests soars. If the temperature is 10 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, the ski resort is at full capacity with 400 guests. So the two quantities we're dealing with here is gonna be temperature, which is measured in degrees Fahrenheit. And then the second quantity is going to be number of guests, which is measured in guests. In this problem, the number of guests is going to depend on the temperature, which means the number of guests is going to be our dependent quantity. And the temperature is going to be our independent quantity. Mr. Wright judges the annual jelly bean challenge at the summer fair. Every year, he encourages the citizens in his town to guess the number of jelly beans in a jar. He records all the possible guesses and the number of jelly beans that each guess was off by. So the two quantities in this problem is the, uh, the guess for the number of jelly beans. which is measured in jelly beans. And the second quantity um, is uh, the number of jelly beans the guest was off by. So uh, guess off by, which again is measured in jelly beans. So in this case, the number the guest was off by will depend on what the guest was which means the number the guest was off by is gonna be the dependent quantity, and the guess for the number of jelly beans is gonna be the independent quality. You can kind of think of the independent quality quantity has to come before the dependent quantity. You have to guess for the number of jelly beans before you can determine what your guess was off by.